The New Reality, a look at the future of mobile technology with your host, John Romero. I'm John Romero, and welcome to another episode of the ARM New Reality series. Today, we're taking a look at the future of telehealth on mobile devices with Darius Munsef, founder and CEO of BraveCare. Hey, Darius, can you tell me a little about BraveCare? Sure. BraveCare is trying to build, you know, the best healthcare experience for kids, which puts the kid sort of front and center in that care experience. So uh, we started with uh, physical clinics in Portland, Oregon, with the intention of scaling the digital offering and eventually being a national healthcare option for kids anyway. How are you using mobile devices to bring healthcare services to your patients? Everybody deserves access to incredibly good quality of health, regardless of a financial ability. And so it's been a big effort to build the operating system that operates the clinics which connects to a mobile app that basically creates this whole ecosystem with however you engage with us, we know who you are. How we specifically built that in our clinics was being able to build a tablet device that when you walk in for a patient visit, you don't have to sit in a waiting room. Nobody is comfortable sitting around a bunch of other sick people. So we still have a waiting room. We try not to use it. We push you straight into a visit room. You now have a tablet you can check in on. So you're not paper writing something out that somebody then has to transcribe and I've wasted your time and somebody else's time. You're creating your user account through this tablet. It's the beginning of having your portal with us. Um, we now, this is the other thing that we built using ARM technology was um, lights that sit outside the rooms that are door fins. That light maintains a different color for a different part of where that person is in their visit. The light that we 3D printed and built that goes above every room has a motion sensor in it as well. So when a, a provider walks out, they can just wave a hand. It updates the software and updates the whole clinic to know what the status is and nobody had to touch anything to do it was a lot of work to think about the operating system that could run a clinic, how that engages with a patient who's both at home and then how it interacts with somebody in a clinic. And it seems maybe trivial to have a light change color, but when we went about building that one, we wanted to internally track the amount of time somebody spent at every step in a visit. Not to ever put the pressure on shortening the personal time. The goal is to short, shorten the time where somebody's just sitting there waiting. So when you're done checking in to when we get into that room, that's where we get data driven around speeding that up as fast as possible. What are the security issues that are unique to mobile experiences in the healthcare industry? Front and center for healthcare and security and risks is you know patient information, healthcare data. So we've got HIPAA compliance issues, you got personally identifiable, identifiable information being stored. The other thing that is a real concern, especially dealing with children, especially in healthcare, where sometimes we need to see a photo of a child's rash in order to give a parent good guidance, that now means we are storing or transferring photos of kids' bodies, which just means we have to very be protective about, you know, being able to receive a photo on the other end to see it and then immediately deleting that photo. It can stay on the consumer's device, but we don't ever want to be responsible for storing those kinds of things long term. So it's a matter of putting the power in somebody's hand, allowing us to get the information so we could do good diagnosis and treatment while trying to maintain sort of holding the least amount of that information long-term as possible. You have this amazing app that you've developed, which is pretty critical to the entire thing. And it'd be cool to check out the app now, like if you could walk me through how it works and you know what's unique. Sure. A, a lot of the things that parents really need in this mobile experience and where the value of telehealth comes in is being able to triage how serious this concern is. My five-year-old just dropped the scissors on her foot yesterday and it was only a small cut, but a lot of blood came out. And that's the kind of moment where you're like, should we be rushing out of the door? Are we okay? And so there's two ways we've tried to address that. The symptom checker really doesn't try and diagnose the problem. It's just trying to figure out do you need to go to the ER? You know, an urgent care at your leisure is fine. Or you know what, you're actually fine to stay home. And that really is the, the urgent setting most parents are in when something happens with their kid. For remote get care, we're currently licensed in 12 states where we can actually do a video visit with you. And so there's a certain subset of the lower acuity care could be a pink eye, or I think I have a rash where being able to visually see it is enough for a provider. And so we can do diagnosis and treatment remotely in those wow. kinds of settings. So you can book a virtual visit through the app if you're in market with us, and hopefully that's everywhere someday, you can book the in-person visit. And then the more interactive version of the symptom checker or where the symptom checker hasn't yet given you the confidence you need, the, the chat is built right into the app. So 
Um, this is 24 seven. We have pediatric staff either in our clinics or we staff our own nurses overnight to give you good guidance where it's, you know, it was, it's trying to give you the power of uh, an assistant to help you with this information when you're in your times of need. And you can do that all through a mobile app. Everybody basically has one and they're incredibly powerful these days. Is there anything that you can see that uh, mobile devices don't have today, but that your service would love to have something inside a mobile device of the future that could help your business? The most important thing for doing really great healthcare, regardless of the age of the person, is incredibly accurate information around vital signs, um, you know, the state and condition of that patient on the other end. So people have found, you know, hacky ways to use camera lights and or the flash of a light in a camera in order to see, you know, heart rate and pulse and these things. But those are the workarounds. And it's, you know, that's a dangerous place to be using workarounds to try and do meaningful, you know, outcomes with, with healthcare. So the more that we're pushing forward and then, you know, some of the watches and the phones are moving towards the biometric scanning, you know, I have, an, I have a watch that can tell me where my heart rhythms are. That level of precision is very important and it's close. It's, it's not there yet, um, but we're trying to build that infrastructure that as those new you know, measurement tools can come online, we have another way to pull it into the app. Yeah, you, you can see it as either that the phone becomes an extension where it has those services in it, or it just becomes a more seamless ecosystem of all the things that interact with my phone, which becomes my personal hub. But, you know, again, it doesn't need to mean that the autoscope is built into my phone. There's just a seamless health orb in my house that has all the things that I need. And it's just, it connects to my phone. It knows who I am. It knows my kids and it becomes the, the provider's hands that live in that house. Well, it's great to hear your story and to, to see uh, the success of your endeavors. And, um, you know, we just wish you really great luck. Appreciate it. Thank you.